Good morning everyone, my name is Christian from Two-Headed Wolf Gaming and welcome back to Path of Exile. I am redoing episode 19 of Path of Exile because I looked back on it when I was creating this episode on loot filters. This is something that I find very important for someone who's playing Path of Exile. It's very useful for everybody playing and it's going to be especially useful for you. I know I'm moving a bit away from what I first said I was going to do, meaning I'll go with the per first playthrough with no filters, with like playing like a beginner and trying not to add too much extra knowledge. But there are so many items in this game that I find that many times the action is covered by the items. So I wanted to go ahead and show you, not just tell you, but also show you how to set up a loot filter. So when I look back on the episode I registered on the, uh, the a few days ago, I was talking mostly, I didn't show how you could go online and how to look at one. And so here is a recording and re-uploading of episode 19. It might not be as important for those who've already seen it, but I know there will be people who will appreciate it uh, when they're coming back and looking at at the at this episode. So how do we start finding a loot filter? Well, pretty easily. Go into your browser, whether that is uh, Google or Bing or whatever you might be be using for uh, for your search engine, and you will go ahead and write Path of Exile loot filter. Okay. And here we will find two links. We find the first one, which I recommend, filterblade.xyz. And there are a few others like GitHub. If you really want to look around, there are different ways to download. But I do recommend going simply for filterblade. Uh, like, know that this is not created by GGG. From what I can tell, it's made by the community. So what you'll first find is the menu that you need. There will be filter, strictness, style, presets, and sounds. Where do you start? Well, you start with the filter. Just keep it simple. Never think stable. The, the other ones might be useful in the future, but it's only when you know what you're doing. Keep it at never think stable. The next and most important one is strictness which starts from soft, regular, semi-strict, strict, very strict, uber strict, and uber plus strict. This is in regards to how many items it will show you on the map. The regular one is the normal one. It's one where you, that you would use maybe in self-founding -sound, self league, because you want to see most of the items. It doesn't present too many restrictions. It only shows some color. I recommend going for the next one, which is semi-strict, which will present you only part of the item. Basically, it's the top 50% items that you find on the map. Uh, this is pretty a pretty general filter if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And then if you go for strict, this is something that I use at the moment. It presents, if I remember correctly, only 35% of the top items. It's hiding parts of the scrolls and once you go over level 65. So there, it's pretty good. I would generally recommend that you just stay with semi-strict. It's what you need. So you go for never think stable and you go for semi-strict as a, a variation. For style, as far as style goes, it changes colors and sounds sometimes. But uh, this is something uh, like it's about preferences. Like I'll show you around here, uh, just the changing colors when you pick one or the other. Once again, it's only about what you prefer. And then there's a bunch more options that you could do, like putting in sounds, um, which can help you. Like if you're moving around the map really quickly and taking care of enemies quickly, a sound might be easier for you not to miss an important item 
but that is really something that you want to go into once we once you know what you are doing once you've played the game a bunch of times you will know how to um, basically create your own filters make one personalized for whatever you you want and you need what you do next is you go to straight to download you give it a name and you after you download that and save that file, you move into your documents, into your profile and path of exile, and you paste the document you've downloaded it there. And then you will have to go into path of exile options. I will change it back to the video now to show you how this is done, because from here on out, I'll let the video play as normal. You go here into the options, UI, right? And down at the bottom, you'll find the list of item filters. Like you have the non or default. I have this, the filter blade, which I just downloaded with a semi strict. And you see, I have a never seen filter with strict. We'll keep this one with the filter blade. And now we will go continue our quests and show you how it functions, show you how you can also I'm check sure items um, items that you you haven't yet uh, or items that you've hidden with your loot filter. So let's see, where were we? We were going uh, here for Kitava and we also were looking for these Kitava Stormans. Okay, well, I'll go to the Chamber of Innocence. Talk to what Bannon over here. Have you done? And then we'll go to the Torch Course. Uh, I think this is the right way, right? Yes. So we'll go ahead. As you can see, like these are the free items you uh, I have found. Depending on the loot filter, like some of the items that you need is going to look bigger and some will be hidden, like these ones, right? So these are two normal items that we don't really need, so they're not gonna show. Later on, I might be changing to strict as well. There we have it. We're opening these, all these items that are not better than what we have or are pretty weak will not be shown to us. And so you can have this loot filter from the start. Go with a start with a semi strict one, generally speaking, and then go to something more more advanced, more strict as you get closer to the end game. But play around. Try it yourself and decide what works for you. As I said, I, I like to do a, a mix. Generally, early on, maybe in my first character, I will always put a semi-strict one and then go for a strict one. But even today, by holding Alt, you, you can see the item. So I do that every once in a while. My hand is already over the number at the top of the keyboard because I do want uh, to uh, to use the flask so every once in a while I healed alt trying to think some things why is this normal leather belt showing see it gives me 39 life well the reason why that belt it was showing is because it didn't have any kind of magic properties so it's a great base item or crafting right like you could start by enhancing it to a magic property trying to get the best out of it and then you'll go to the next level where it's uh, rare or you you know and add a few more I uh, modifiers through crafting so this is why this loot filter is awesome because it really takes into consideration what might be useful and this was thought really well by the people who created the loot 
has an idea so yeah as you can imagine it's pretty pretty useful everybody is using loot filters some of the more advanced players made it made some themselves gave it a bunch of sounds and yeah they really use it once again especially during certain uh, events like contests and things like that and today so can you and it's all free all of this is free you don't need to to pay however um, they do have a section where you can donate money for all the work they're doing because they also keep it update updated every few weeks they and they make an update on the filters so if you uh, find its use and you are able to please go ahead support those that create cool things or uh, that, that you thing. use i think that is a very important thing that we don't have to we shouldn't forget because people really put in a lot of work and a lot of love to make this happen so i personally always try to to give something back To, to those who work for for me and to to make my experience better as you can see this ring gold ring has only slow me down has lighted up I think we should be checking these items and currently we didn't sell anything the last time we were at home so I'm going to go home greetings and see what we can do like this hunter is superior hunter hood is looks better than what we have already some cold resistance some life some accuracy evasion yeah it's better than the wolf one i have so maybe we'll throw in these gems on the hoodie. Change that here. And now we can think about selling it. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry too much there. I'll keep the leather belt. This hasn't really been useful for us. Let's see, chaos, cold, maximum mana. I don't really like this one has a hundred mana a uh, hundred life which is better yeah maybe we don't need this either I'm not gonna overcomplicate the situation on this run we're just gonna throw in these items now We'll throw some of these here. Maybe go the, with the unique on the unique. I'd be dead right now. You can ask. Innocence. Talk to Bannon. He gave us a quest. Okay. More sulfite. As always, the music. Pretty epic. You can see that this makes the loot filter makes our life so much easier. Uh, we can open all the quests and not have to worry about sitting by and trying to, to see what works for us and what doesn't. I'm not up to that just yet. We are in the torched courts here. My mana is gone. As you we get a hallowed mana flask because it is better than what we currently have. Could be probably a good idea to use that. We found more sulfide. Which means that we'll be able to delve once again to go into the mines. 
This is a possible better version of our own boots. So yeah, let's pick let's pick some of these up. And still not going to use everything I found. Okay, more another chest here. There seems to be an open path. What is this? The ossuary? What do we need from the ossuary? Signs of purity. I think I'll go with for the recu uh, reliquary first. And then probably we'll come back to the ossuary. And maybe if we can find the ruin square as well. We found the jewel. More sulfite. Some of our damage still keeps up. But at the same time, it's not the best. Like some of these enemies really uh, take too many shots as far as I'm concerned. Superior rapier, we don't need it. Did you think our vengeance was done, savior? Oh no, it has only begun. Hey, let's see how do we defeat this guy. Well, at least he's distracted. Nice. So, it also showed us the Trapper Boots. Even though it's not better, it has the link. So, it does show us uh, the chromatic combination as well. I'm not up to that just now, yet. here we have another one of those hideouts. Let's see, a free link battle hammer we don't use. I'll bring in some ballistas to help me out here. We found the reliquary. As you can see, in a, in a certain sense, I have a pretty good idea of where the different quests are. Not always, but I do. I do love the enemies in this game, they're pretty creative. It's really nice that I play this with you guys, like again, think about all these elements, even though I haven't thought about them in a while, because now Path of Exile for me has been mostly about creating builds, about making them work, about using other people's build mostly than creating builds and trying to understand like why do they work that way and what is it about this skill or this build that makes it work what does it what kind of passive skills do you need to invest in in order to make it powerful there are items late game items that really change your skill tree too like they influence and change the effects of your passive skills okay we are taking some damage here so we are really taking some damage from these characters let's see how are our defenses they're doing pretty they're pretty good but I see that too many of these magical creatures really are really bad for our health. So we have to use our flask a bit more often than I thought we would be. Here we found a four gem 
The five gem four link axe. Arohongui. Rolls of wisdom, another recipe there. Okay. Our ice elemental there is distracting our enemies for a bit, but it's not really tough. I'm not up to that I should yet. probably think of a way to make him stronger, like give him some life. We'll find a kind of support gem that provides him with further life, with more life or regen, things like that. Okay, we level up here. Okay, so what do we invest now? In lethality, that's what we're investing in. So I'll go with that. Now I think I would really like some kind of bleed effect on our bow. Is there anything that we go here and we look at bleed. Um, this increases our bleeding. There we have a skill here. Gain plus 13 line when you hit a bleeding enemy. Okay, 40% to critical strike multiplier against bleeding attacks have a 25% chance to cause bleeding. So maybe we can think about that. Maybe we'll go this direction too. What is this? You can inflict bleeding on an enemy up to 8 times. Your bleeding does not deal extra damage while the enemy is moving. 50 less damage with bleeding. So we can stack up bleeding by going on this side. Hmm. Interesting. So do we want to make this huge investment into this direction? Like so? Or like this? In order to create... Give that effect to our character? That is a pretty good question. We'll have to see. But it might be worth looking into it. If that is the case, then I'm not sure that all the investments we've made right now are really that useful anymore. We'll think about it. See how that works. An orb of chance here. Let's see. For this strong box, maybe we can make it better. Upgrade the normal arm item. Yeah. Let's see, we made it slightly more powerful. But it didn't give us anything useful. I'll open this blacksmith chest as well. We found the steel head. More vicious, vicious projectiles. Okay, here we found a silver coin, a few more powerful items, but none that we could use. Generally I like to take care of these kind of rare or magical monsters because they do provide us with the most experience. So that is always good. Mm. 
Okay. I think that's about it. We found all, all of the necessary items. I'm just gonna explore a bit more. See if we can't find anything else of use. But it doesn't look like it. I think we found most of the items that we wanted. Yeah, I guess that is that for now. So let's use a town portal scroll. Go here, turn in the two quests. Talk to Bannon here. Let's see. What do you give us? Projectiles pierce an additional target. 10% increased projectile damage. 8 increased attack damage. Plus 1 to melee strike range. Or mana regeneration with movement speed and attack and cast speed. Well, projectile cities. Innocence blesses your journey. Uh, we will need, though, a jam slot. And what do we have here? This is elemental damage and 3 mana per second. And we're not really using the elemental damage that much, right? Yeah, we just have this enhancement with the Herald device. Let's go in and throw the projectile one. Definitely a tiny bit better. The regenerate of 3 mana per second is not really that impressive. Might be more important to try to work this potion into providing us what poison yeah immune to poison could be good it's pretty important in the late game especially to have some of this flask to remove certain effects fortunately it did not but I'll put that in place as well. Okay. Freedom comes to those the idea is things like poison. Oh yeah, let's identify this. 147. We definitely have more resistances with our current boots with chaos and lightning. So I'm not gonna replace it. The free colored link ones will just sell them as they are. Fire damage and increased damage with bleeding. If we're going with bleeding, we might want to Remember, keep that in place. I'm just gonna throw in the chest this gem. And here, I'll show you one more thing. At the end of this episode, you right click to customize a stash. And here you can say, like, as I said earlier, cash. There's, whether it's public or not, whether visitors can act, can see, like, what's in this stash. And uh, different colors you can add on some of these customizable ones. Like, the green ones are customizable, the black ones are not. And if you click on affinities, like currency... What happens is that even when you are in a different tab, when you control click the item to throw it directly into your stash, it's going to move automatically into the stash you've made with currency. Like this can be changed with all the stashes. This is the re most recent update that happened. It happens with all the stashes. But these are the different kind of... Mm, items I would say or item classes like we'll put here the unique affinity which means that we can be over here throw this gem with control click and it's going to go into the uniques and so on and so forth like you can do this with every kind of item class like we have here uh, what the cards like we'll put the affinity divination cards here we're going to put the the filter with essences and what else 
Like we have a few more that we can throw in fragments. And yeah, we'll leave the rest for later. For the moment we made another, we gained another passive point. And I'm really thinking Calling strike against marked enemies, 25 damage with hits and elements against marked enemies. I'm thinking about going for this, for the deadly draw. Pretty close. Maybe this, you can inflict bleeding up to 8 times, that could be really good. What else do we have on hand? Frenzy could increase our attack rate. We also have these Split Shot, Freak Shot. Projectiles have 50% chance for an additional projectile when forking. We could do that. I'm thinking right now. That is probably a better idea, or we could try at least, to go this way. Let's get this split shot. Maybe it's going to split into multiple enemies and Let me work with us. Future. We'll get a few more prophecies. You will track down a powerful dripping dead who will drop a unique item when slain. That, that is awesome. Well, at this point... I guess this is all the time that we have for today, so I'll just put a quick cut in here and I'll see you all into the next episode. I hope you have enjoyed it, remember, look up, loot filter, download it, put it into your documents and then load it up from the options menu of the UI and you will be ready, set for uh, a more customizable experience and an easier one on finding loot. So that's it for today. I wish you all a wonderful day ahead.